Ningo Jokayo Arigato Gosaimas. Adai Konai no Mahara Open Forum ni Sankariki Koi ni Sonjimas. Nihon no Mahara no Ryoshaka Ishido ni Kaishi Manabiai Tokake a Sakunen Tasishta Kotoro Shokai Suru Suparashi Kikaides. Korekara Futsukakan Watat Watashitashi o Tsunagi, Aedea o Kokansuru Kikaio, Tsukute Kutazata Takai Chikoi no Minasama no Gojin Ryokuni, Kanja Moshiagimas. Shigeki Tekina Discussion Nia Foreta, Suparashi Ibentonto, Naru Kotoro Inote Imas. Deva Mahara Ju Hatten Zero Yon Soste Osurako Minasanga Machino Son Diru Tsugino Ririsuno Mahara Ju Hatten Ichi Zero Ni To Sai Sarita Sai Shino Kino no Iksukao Gosho Kai Shimas So in Mahara 1804, we introduced a number of new privacy regulations and or we supported a number of new privacy regulations uh, that were introduced in the European Union. But they are not just of interest to Europeans, um, but also to people around the world. And so I'd just like to give you a very brief glimpse, glimpse, glimpse into those. Um, so that you can check them out for yourself um, in order to see if they would be of interest to your own universities. Um, it is now possible that students can accept the terms and conditions and also the privacy statement. That is important in order to know when they have read them and when they have agreed to them. So what you can see when you provide a privacy statement and terms and conditions and turn on the strict privacy functionality in Mahara is that you see the date when the agreement was last updated. Because there can be multiple iterations, it is important to know to which one the students agreed to. They can then read the text and agree by clicking the yes button or not agreeing by switching it to no. And then it is also stated when the student agreed to the terms and conditions and the privacy statement. That way you have a track record of when students agreed to your university guidelines. Of course, um, they can revoke their choice and uh, therefore at some point can say, I don't agree anymore. And then you can engage with them in an email exchange in order to work out whether they can still keep their account on your Mahara site or whether it needs to be deleted. As administrator, you can also run a report over these agreements in order to see which students have yet to agree and which ones have already agreed. For the new privacy regulations in the EU, it is important that students can be forgotten or learn people in general that their online presence can be deleted. And so in Mahara, it is now possible that every account, no matter the authentication method, can be deleted. However, in the case of universities, schools, or other organizations, it might actually be necessary that you review the accounts before they are deleted. In case the students still have some assessments that you need to keep. And that's where the account review comes in so that the student can request the deletion. But then as institution, you can decide whether you actually want the account deleted or whether something else needs to happen first. 
while Mahara 1804 was very much or very much evolved around um, improving the privacy in Mahara and adding a number of those features, we also implemented a number of others. Amongst them is now the possibility to rotate images. This is in particular of interest um, for those people uploading images via mobile devices, via smartphones or tablets, where the image is not automatically rotated to the correct um, rotation angle. We also put in links to the Mahara user manual in the footer of each Mahara um, site. If you have your own Mahara user manual um, that goes along the uh, normal Mahara one and has similar links, then you can also link to that. And so in this case, wherever you are on a page, the user manual goes to that page in the user manual in order to give you the contextual help and make it easier for you to find the context of that page. Another big feature um, that you might have already heard of is that we now support cloud storage for Amazon and also Microsoft Azure. There are a couple of plugins involved for that, but the infrastructure is directly in Mahara core. And so depending on whether you are hosted on Amazon or Microsoft Azure, you would then install the appropriate plugin and can move pictures and video to the cloud storage, to object storage, in order to have financial benefits and not have your hosting costs shoot through the roof the more the students upload. Those were just a few of the new features um, that we introduced earlier in the year in Mahara 1804. I wanted to highlight those for you since we hadn't seen each other in a year. Namely, last time was uh, last September. And so I wanted to give you a brief recap of those new features. But now let's actually take a look at the upcoming Mahara 18.10. The release candidate will be out shortly. We are finalizing the last features and um, I'm going to give you a glimpse at the biggest ones that we have. When we take a look at portfolio work, um, four verbs come to mind in my opinion. Namely, we create evidence, we collect evidence and put it into Mahara um, by uploading videos or images or also external content like YouTube videos. Then we curate that evidence and bring it together, contextualize it, and then we converse about it. Now, in Mahara 18.10, we particularly look at the last two the curation and the conversation. And what does that look like? Well, we help with the scaffolding. It is now possible to set up institution tags. So as institution administrator, you can set up a series of tags that you'd like, like your students to choose in their portfolio. So when you set it up, the students, when they are then in their portfolios, can see directly those tags without having to create them again. It is also possible for you now to tag external media so that blocks can also be tagged. Um, that can be YouTube videos then or um, blog entries from other sites in order to then pull them together. And that pulling together is done via the possibility to create a page based on one or more tags. So if you've tagged all your learning evidence and also blocks on other pages, you can then create a new page, say which tags should be included on that page, and then all the evidence that has been tagged with this tag or with multiple tags is being put on the page automatically. And that can be videos, images, 
blog entries, YouTube videos, um, regular notes, and anything that you have associated with the tag that you're displaying. And once everything is on that new page, you can then curate and shuffle things around um, or remove things or add additional items. However, it is really easy uh, directly to um, add all content that you have around one tag or more tags to a page without having to search in your files area. Now that is the curation part of the site of what we put into Mahara 18.10. There's also a whole bunch around assessment going into that next version. And that is kind of still around conversation because you have conversations around um, the learning evidence, conversations with the students um, of what they have been learning. And so we have been working extensively with one of our district health boards here in New Zealand in order to put in some more assessment features and workflows that assist the creation of a registration and assessment portfolio. And so what is happening is that you can now set up peers and also managers in Mahara. And they have two different um, capabilities, which I'm going to explain shortly. Mahara 18.10 will have the peer assessment block available, which allows people who have the peer permissions to give blind feedback on the student's performance or on the learner performance in general. So they do not see any content that the student had put up on their page so that it's really a blind review um, of the capabilities of the student and skills and competencies. When there's a peer assessment block on a page, the peer assessor can click the link to add an assessment. Um, you can also set up instructions for them um, to make it easier and tell them exactly what you're expecting from them and then the peer can give their assessment. They can then save that as a draft so that they can read it over in a day's time or in a week's time before it is published to the student. Once it is published to the student, the student can see it and they can also talk about uh, the assessment. Now the other side is that managers uh, can be required to verify a page before it continues on, for example, to the learning management system. And so we have the sign off and verification in Mahara, which allows the student to say when their page is ready for the assessor to take a look at. And then um, it can also be decided whether a verification by a manager or by an assessor is needed. If that is the case, then that will be shown on the page. And again, the manager can be selected as part of the permissions process in Mahara um, so that they can be chosen and the connection to them made very easily. Now, when a student is ready to sign off their page, they can do so directly on their page by clicking an icon um, indicating that they've signed off on it. And then the verifier, the manager, can go in there and also do their verification. Another assessment feature that we have been working on and that you will probably have already heard a few times is that we have LTI for assignment submission. So the previous work that I have shown you for the assessor and manager peer review workflow that can also lead into using that work that they have done and then submit it into the learning management system. In this case, we are expanding the LTI functionality that we already have in Mahara in order to um, then send the grade directly to Moodle, for example. But because it is LTI, it also works with other learning management systems. 
Now the following screenshots are not in Japanese yet uh, because we are finalizing the, uh, the last bits of testing and so MITS hasn't had the chance yet to actually see the, um, see the pages and the text but I'm sure that he will um, translate it as soon as um, the functionality is in Mahara core. So once you have set up the assignment in your learning management system, for example, in Moodle via the external tool, you can then decide as teacher whether you want to unlock the portfolio after grading is done and archive it, or whether you want to keep it locked and not archive it. Once these settings have been made, the student can go in and submit their portfolio for assessment. So they can um, select any of their portfolios that are currently not already being assessed and submit it to that assignment. Then the teacher can go back into that assignment and from the learning management system, click on the link and is taken into Mahara where they see all the submissions for that assignment that have already been made. So in my case, it is just Paula. They then click the link for the grading and can view the portfolio. They can comment on the portfolio um, at the bottom of the page on the artifacts like they normally do and then give a grade. Um, LTI only allows us to give a grade between 0 and 100 and that is then the grade that is transferred into the learning management system and record it there so that it becomes part of the regular assignments that are being tracked in the LMS. That was just a very brief glimpse into the new big functionalities for Mahara 18.10. We are still working on a couple of others um, that we would like to include and that also means a timeline for Mahara so that you can review your portfolio of what it looked like a few weeks ago or at the start of the semester. But we have not quite yet uh, put that into the core code and therefore are still tweaking last bits and pieces, but there will be another bigger feature still available for that, that you can test very soon. And we are also looking into having isolated institutions, making it easier for people to um, have one big Mahara instance, but everybody being on their own. And if you are interested in learning more of these features um, or have any questions after today, please do feel free to get in touch with me and um, send me an email or we can also arrange for a webinar in order to discuss um, your questions there. And of course, I'm also very, very looking forward to hearing how you are using Mahara in your own institutions. Thank you.